So, for the first five parts of the LP, it's been me, Travis, and Yoshi. I decided in between sessions I would go ahead and just record a little bit by myself, because there's some things you can do solo. One of them being grinding the crap out of rupees. So I have bought three pieces of frilly fabric, and we're going to see the results of that at the end of this. You know, part of me doesn't really necessarily appreciate this. <laughs> because I was like, I was on the same process as like, you know what, I could really grind for the, the fiercest outfit possible. <laughs> nah, it's, it's fine. No one else will do it. I also wanted to go ahead and just grab the camera, because... For all of those five videos, we've just been seeing, go to the camera guy to get a camera to do whatever with it. Turns out it's not that impressive. All it is is you just press X while you're out on the drab lands and it takes a screenshot. Does it take a screenshot of your emo I guess it would pick up the emoticons in that sense. I don't think it does, actually. Oh, that, that's some of the best parts we had. Well, we have video proof of that, at least. Eh, that's true. You know, this is also the first opportunity I've got to listen to the music of it, because I, I played the game with the volume completely down, so... Yeah. I like it. It's it's unique. It is a really cool soundtrack. And fun fact, I actually recorded this first bit with the uh, audio turned off accidentally, so this is actually piped in audio on its own. Oh. But not anymore. So yes. Aw, that's an adorable outfit. <laughs> that's a Zora outfit. It's one of the better outfits, especially if you're grinding, because it allows you to get under the bridge to these bunch of jars really quickly. But now I've got all three pieces of the frilly fabric. Let's get the best outfit ever. Yes! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh, Pizza Joe, you're so fine. You're so... <laughs> but it's still so cute. Look at that costume. <laughs> it's like I'm being eaten by it. The cheer outfit is really cool. That increases our energy gauge. Everyone on your teams. Oh, good. Look, I noticed that like a lot of the girl outfits that have really good powers, like the princess one gives you uh, more hearts like that. Yeah. Oh, that, you can't see my belly button. <laughs> oh, look, there's the tram stamp. Oh. <laughs> One thing I appreciate is that all the dresses and the skirts, whenever you put those on, like, nobody's laughing at you. They're all treated equally. I think they're just jealous. There's a difference. <laughs> I did it! I got... This is also showing off, when you go into Madame Couture's, you can go back into the dressing room and try on the different outfits, and everything this lady says is the same thing, which normally that'd be annoying, but this is actually a perfect chance to show off some things that I had bought, but accidentally recorded with the audio off. It's like I missed nothing. Oops. <laughs> See, it's just all compliments. These are pretty cool outfits. Most of them are very specific to, like, one world map. Great, now I gotta level grind shit. <laughs> They mostly just expand your abilities. They're not necessary for anything. I still love that costume. They just thought, what's the stupidest thing we could put on Link? <laughs> <laughs> Even she can't compliment it. <sighs> Part of me kind of wishes that you could end up picking up the um, outfit that you wore on uh, in Wind Waker. Well, that's kind of the hero. Oh, yeah, the... The shrimp outfit. Yeah, the shrimp outfit. So one of the random things while you're out exploring Hytopia is sometimes you'll actually see Styla herself just out and about crying to herself. And it actually made me kind of like her and feel bad for her because she's out hiding because she wants to check in on you, wants to make sure you're okay. Even Zelda doesn't do that. I was thinking just more she's kind of a drama queen. She's like, I hope someone notices me crying. <laughs> Look at these things. God. These are the doppels. When you play solo, you have to control all of them. All by yourself. That's not fun sounding at all. 
Neither was that. <laughs> that sounded painful. You say it doesn't sound fun at all. It's It takes a while, but once you get used to it, you can breeze through these areas really quickly. And I don't want to say it's because it was just me and not with you and Yoshi. But that's what you mean. But that's implied, yes. <laughs> For example, just to show off the solo, I'm not going to show off the entire game solo, but the Forest Temple is a good example of what you do to play through the game by yourself. It might be more efficient, but is it as fun? Well, we get through it faster. <laughs> that didn't answer my question, Thor. Sometimes it evens out. <laughs> yeah, that didn't answer my question. I still remember the ice cave. <laughs> I remember it fondly, I mean... <laughs> For a lot of these, you're going to be playing just as one doppel and exploring the entire map by yourself. I mean, if this is what you pretty much look like when you switch out, is that what every Link looks like? Those disgusting dried husks? Yeah, including your actual body. That's terrifying. Yeah. There is a cool mechanic where when you pick up a doppel, you can actually use their item. So it's like you're controlling all of them at once. Oh, come on. We would have done, done this faster if, you know, all of us were involved. Come on. <laughs> I wouldn't be throwing Yoshi into it or anything. Oh, no. Oh, no. Damn it. See, that wouldn't have happened to this. <laughs> it probably would have happened more, to be honest. But... Yeah. Uh... Well, we've already been through this. This is true. And I just remember being upset there was no cliffs to throw Yoshi off of. One nice thing is if you walk two doppels over here, they'll actually break formation and immediately stand in their appropriate triangles. Also, I found an easy way to take care of these jellyfish things is to smack them perpendicular to a wall so that they always bounce right back into your sword. I think it's a little bit easier to communicate by yourself just because if only one person's hitting them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that works. I question if they are frozen like that, then they take damage if hit by an enemy? No, they do not, but they will take damage if they end up falling down a cliff. That's about it. Because, see, if you had to worry about your little doppels, that kind of suck. No, thankfully you don't. Can you use them as weapons? In a way, you kind of can, I think. Just kind of throw them at enemies or something. I do remember me throwing one of them at an enemy and it hurt them. Wow. You found out that the true way to play this is by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on the area. Some of these will take a good long while. But I mean, you guys know my gaming philosophy. There might be a right way to do it, and then there's the fun way to do it. I like the latter. <laughs> also, to be fair, probably the ice place sucked more because we played for like three hours. That's true. We did do that entire session in one day. So by the end of it, we were just kind of getting frustrated <laughs> and slowly falling away from our mics. Yeah, I do appreciate that. I had to do a lot of gain. Now this area is especially going to go by faster. For the Force Temple, I think it helps having the Big Bomb outfit, because then it's easier to blow up those blocks. Oh wow. Now, how long did that take us? Well, the honestly, this one I don't remember us taking it that long, compared to some of the other ones, of course. Yeah. Oof. One nice thing is they actually change up the pushing blocks so that you only need one person to do it. 
<laughs> but honestly, probably looking back, it probably took us like three hours just to do this part. Yeah. And a lot of it was just bickering. Mostly with you and Yoshi. <laughs> I have a way with him, like I said. <laughs> Damn it. Well, also, I could just imagine keeping alive is a lot easier when you're the only one who can get hit. Right. Damn it. Yes. This does notice kind of now you running around throwing bombs and solving puzzles. It does feel a vague bit more like Bomberman. <laughs> Well, look at my outfit. Yeah, exactly. I know why you picked it. I need to move all of the doppels into the area for the boss to spawn. But nobody likes the doppel. <laughs> <laughs> this boss was such a pushover. He's even easier by myself. Really, the hardest part about it is just cycling the doppels quick enough. Just throwing a bomb. Throw the guy up top onto him, switch over him while he's in the middle of the air, and just swing at the eyeball. He goes in his second form a lot faster this time, though. Do they maybe give the bosses less health? Possibly. Possibly. Also, I figured out how to actually get him to spin. You just have to walk really closely to him. Now, this can be a little tricky, because from where I am, I need to throw both of the guys onto there, then switch to the blue, throw the guy on top away so that I can attack the eye, and then grab the green guy, fall back on the red guy, and keep going from there. Seems a little unnecessary. I feel like you could just throw the two up, switch to the blue, throw the green guy off, and then hit him with the blue. Well, that's what I'm doing. No, maybe like throw him off the, the spike cake. Probably, but I'm just going by what's faster. Also, I found a pretty good way to make this easier when he's jumping around is to switch to the guy with the arrows and shoot an arrow at him because that stuns him and then he can run up and keep hitting him. There's just something that's always so uncomfortable about an enemy who's just an eye because imagine like someone just smacking you in the eye repeatedly. <laughs> Not just the eye, the eyeball. Well, there's no nerve endings that we can see. Have you ever been poked in the eye thorn and it hurts like a bitch? Yeah, because you have nerve endings. That's just an eyeball. Do I get them all? Do I get them all? Yes! <laughs> Logically, an eyeball would not have a brain either, so it does, apparently. <laughs> but then it probably has nerve endings, too. It's probably think that's really cruel. You gave me a brain and nerve endings? Why? I did know that the music in this game does sound a little more fun, less adventurous and kind of more fun, and yeah, it's just interesting. And please tell me you can open all three chests. Oh, I guess not. I was about to say you could open all three chests, huh? No. And I've noticed that the treasures in the chest seem to cycle. It's never consistent. It was for, like, ten chests in a row. But not this time. Yeah, for whatever reason, like, if you just picked a side, you would get all the best stuff. Do you want to go to the one on the left? Okay, get every rare item. All right. So doing that was pretty much how I ground all of those rupees to get the cheerleader outfit. Now this one, I'm not going to show the entire thing, but I am going to show a couple additional things you can do while you're playing. One of them is you can actually skip individual stages, but the game does not just let that fly. It costs a life, and there is a detriment to it. Can you, um, because I noticed you've been just throwing the costume onto your character. Can you throw it on the other characters, too? No, they're always in the hero's clothes. That kind of sucks. Yeah, but that's fine. Because you have to switch to the characters anyway, so I think, you know. Here's another example of aiming it just perpendicular against the wall. The Forest Temple and the Kova Transition were my two main grinding spots. Let's look at all these rupees. 
It's just an adorable outfit. Yeah, I really like the Zora outfit, because look how I swim. It's like I'm eating the water. Or it looks like you're drowning and you're trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Damn. God, Thor, stop sucking at this random game. There you can see. The other treasure would have been a Zora crown, but because I skipped a level, it replaced it with just rupees. Aww. And since I had to spend a life, I only got 60 rupees at the end from the lives. So it does speed it up, but the game is not just gonna let that fly. Which I guess is fair. Because otherwise you just play the last level over and over again. Yeah. Why did you break my pots? Because you can actually talk to this guy. We haven't seen this yet. You can talk to him. When you get hero points, which is just playing online, you can talk to him, and if you get enough, he'll give you an item. But you can also sell off excess items to him for additional rupees, which was another way that I got some more rupees to buy stuff. Can you do that at any point, or do you have to do something to be able to sell him shit? I think you can do it at any point. I didn't notice it until after the session we did, which was like after we'd finished the second main dungeon. Mm -hmm. But that's some additional solo stuff. Maybe later on, if there's some other things I get when we're not recording, I'll show them off. But for the most part, it's going to be us three continuing on from here. Right, now I feel the pressure of having to grind it myself, because I'll just be like, what's the cutest but dumbest looking outfit you can get? That's the one I want. <laughs> that's the bear. All right. And we don't want you to wear that. <laughs> oh, you mean the original one? <laughs> yeah. No, I thought you like, meant a bear suit. I'm like, I know what I must do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a bear suit. I hope there is. You gotta give it some kind of Legend of Zelda name. What would they call a bear in Legend of Zelda? Bizerp? They call it a bear shirt that you're wearing, so I guess it's just a bear. <laughs> yeah, when they're in art form, they call them normal names, but then when they're actually a monster, they call them something else. Bearfos. I was about to say, it's bearfos. b, -b bearka <laughs> And then the only thing you get out of being a bear is just overall laziness. That's the only <laughs> ability you get. I need to lie down. <laughs> That'd be great if that happened in Grimrock too, because you can make a potion that actually transforms you into a bear, and you can swipe at enemies constantly and beat the shit out of them. It'd be great if you drank that, you turn into a bear, and you just immediately fall asleep. <laughs> and the worst part is you're the back of the chain gang, so everyone's dragging this, like, three-ton bear. It's like your character just immediately got over-encumbered. <laughs> oh, look, I found a potion to become a rock elemental. God damn it. 